What's going on beautiful people? It's your boy Kaz Cray, the creator you require, giving you the content that you desire. This video is going to be a full season recap of my UNLV Dynasty on NCAA Football 2005. For those of you guys who haven't been aware of my streaming on YouTube, this is one of my two current streaming series that I'm doing. The other being my Chicago Bears franchise in Madden 05. I'm going to be streaming this series every Tuesday and Friday from 7pm until pretty much I get tired. So, if you guys would like to watch me stream, I usually stream Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. It's usually a lot of fun when I stream, so definitely come through if you would like to see these games played live. So one part of NCAA Football 2005 that is kind of frustrating is the fact that you can't auto-name the entire roster. You have to manually edit each player's name, but I use that to my advantage and allowed my subscribers and patrons and channel members, of course, to rename players, as well as me renaming a few of them of my own. But anyways, let's get into the season recap. We opened up the season against Tennessee, which is a really tough matchup, and it really didn't start off for us very well as they fire a big dot over my cornerback and they get a long touchdown pass to take an early 7-0 lead. We look to respond here as Olafemi Dobney drops back, throws over the middle, and he's going to be picked off. So, really an unideal start for the Rebels at this point. We traded field goals, and now we're in the second quarter. Tennessee leads 10-3, and here is number 12. Throwing over the middle, it's tipped into the air by 55, and it's picked off by 52. So now we have an opportunity to tie the game up here as Dobney drops back, throws over the middle, and he's going to find number 17. He just barely gets into the end zone for the touchdown. So we're tied up at 10 now. We get the ball back after a three and out by Tennessee, and now Dobney lets this one fly. It's caught in double coverage by number four for the touchdown. And we take a 17-10 to 10 lead into halftime as we get the ball in the third quarter. Dobney on the play fake. He'd go right side, and it's caught off the tip by number four. And now, first and goal, handoff to the number 24, and he'd get into the end zone to make it a two-score game. We go to the fourth quarter now, fourth and four for the Vols, and there's a throw of the middle, number 55 tips it away. So we get the ball back on downs as we look to run the clock down. Dobney running the option, and that was just a really dumb play by me, pitching it away. Tennessee takes over, but now they have another fourth down. And number 12, hit as he throws, and that did not even have a chance. And we pull off a monumental upset in week one, 24-10 over Tennessee. In week number two, we take on number 19, Wisconsin, as the Badgers have the ball in our territory. Number three throws the left side, and it's going to be caught by number nine, who gets into the end zone for the touchdown. But on the ensuing extra point, their kicker absolutely smoked the kick, and it's 6-0. We look to respond in the second quarter as Dobney drops back on third and six. Looking right side, decides to scramble, throws last second to Tyree Gorin Jr., who gets the touchdown. We made our extra point to make it seven to six. So now here's Dobney on the play fake, looking down the field. He has all day to throw, but he's hit as he throws this one. It goes off the hands of the receiver and right into the hands of number 18, the free safety. So now Wisconsin has a chance to get some more points on the board here on third and goal. And here is the quarterback throwing left side. And the fullback trying to run the screen, but he can't get to the end zone. And that would lead to a field goal to make it 9-7 to at halftime. Wisconsin with the football here, looking to make it a two-score game. Quick throw left side, and that was just a dumb decision by him. Goes off the hands of one of the DBs, and number 55, the middle linebacker, picks it off. You're going to see a lot of him in this series. As Daubney coughs up the football on a broken play, and Wisconsin picks up the fumble. So now they try a 40-yard field goal with their kicker who missed an extra point earlier. And this one is short and wide. So now we're into the fourth quarter facing a fourth and eight. Dobney drops back and he throws left side and is caught by number four to keep the drive alive. So now kicker Harmon Tedesco will kick a 42-yarder. And this one's going to be short and wide left. So we don't get any points on the board there. Wisconsin looks to run the clock out. As their quarterback rolls to his right, and he has plenty of time to throw. He could scramble, but he's sacked finally. So now we have a chance to get into the end zone here, and Malachi Kidd runs it in for the touchdown. We take a five-point lead with under a minute to go. Wisconsin trying to make a comeback drive here, but it's going to be tipped into the air and picked off by number 55. And we pull off yet another upset over our top 25 team. 
Heading into our third game of the season, we have some players that we have to discipline. Our starting tight end will be suspended two games, as will one of our reserve running backs, but we still gotta go on anyways as we take on Air Force. They're up 6-0, but Malachi Kidd takes it in for a touchdown, but then Harmon Tedesco misses an extra point, so we're tied at 6. Air Force has the ball now on 3rd and 17. They try a little, I don't even know what they're trying to do there, maybe a reverse, but they cough it up. Number 55 picks it up. He's been so clutch over the first three games of the season. Now, third and goal, the fullback punches it in for the go-ahead touchdown. And we end up taking a 13-6 lead into the half as Tedesco makes the second extra point. Now, third and eight in the third quarter. Here's the throw left side. And it's going to be caught by number 82. And he is going to get inside the five. Nearly gets into the end zone there. Now, third and goal for Air Force. They try a little reverse, but our defensive tackle shuts it down. So they have to settle for three. We're into the fourth quarter now, third and nine for the Falcons, and the quarterback throws off his back foot. I don't know what he was doing there, but obviously it wasn't very good. So now they settle for a 37-yard field goal, and their kicker is going to miss it wide right. So now we have a chance to run the clock out here. Here's Dobney looking down the field. Throws right side, and honestly, that should have been P.I. as Brad Vollett was definitely interfered with. Last chance for the Falcons here. Here's the throw left side and in the double coverage and it's tipped away by number three. And now we just have to run the clock out here as Kidd gets the handoff, picks up the first down, and he seals the deal as we escape with a 13-9 victory over Air Force. Game number four of the UNLV Dynasty and we host Utah State in our second conference game of the season. And Utah State would get an early field goal to make it 3-0. Now, here's number two. He gets the handoff, and he's going to take it into the end zone for the touchdown. Very good blocking there, and it's 7-3. Utah State looks to respond. Number four throws right side, and it's broken up by number 45. They'd have to punt it away. So now here's a handoff to number two. And he's able to pick up the first down, but he coughs up the football at the end of the run, and it's picked up by Utah State. So now number four throws left side, and it's picked off by number 45. And he'd get a very good return off of this as well, getting up to about the 43-yard line. We wouldn't do anything with the ball, however, and then Utah State would kick a field goal to make it 7-6. to six. That would be the score heading into half. So it's still anybody's ball game at this point. Utah State starts off with the football in the second half. Here's a throw left side as number five just burns number three for the touchdown. And Utah State takes the lead. They go for two, but it's broken up by Kendrick McCray. So now on the ensuing return, number 21. Looking to get a touchdown possibly. Get some good blocking, but he's going to be pushed out at about the 49-yard line. And now here's Malachi Kidd getting the handoff. Kidd with plenty of space. He's going to pick up the first down. Breaks a tackle, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 36. So now first and 10. Dobney looking down the field. Throws left side. Number four makes the grab. And he's going to get out of bounds at about the two-yard line. Now second and goal after a penalty. Dobney looks towards the end zone. And it's a nice grab by number 21 for the touchdown as we take the lead. We'd get a two-point conversion as well. So now midway through the third, here's a throw right side to 18. He's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown. So Utah State's given us a lot of problems in this one. But now Dobney finds number four in the end zone for the touchdown. And it's 22-19. to Dobney looks to extend the lead here. It's a very long down here. And he's going to throw it right to number nine, the free safety, who picks it off. Utah State wouldn't do anything with it, however. And now Malachi Kidd with a nice juke. Gets a nice run, and he's inside the 30. And now first and goal. Dobney fakes it on the triple option. Pitches it last second to number two and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. And it's a 10-point lead for the Rebels. After a field goal makes it a 32-19 game, here's a handoff to the fullback. He calls up the football, and it's going to be picked up by McCray. And just to put the finishing touches on the game, number two gets another touchdown. His third of the game. We win this one 39-19. Next up, we take on in-state rival Nevada in the battle for the Fremont Cannon. Nevada has a football near midfield. Here's number three throwing right side. It's going to be picked off by number 27. He gets a pretty good return into Nevada territory. But we wouldn't do anything with the football, however. Now, they're trying to run a little reverse option here. And they get a nice little gain. They pitched out the 23, who's tackled down at about the 10. Now third and 12 as number three looks to the right side and is caught in the end zone by 23 for the touchdown. And now Nevada looks to make it a two-score game and they do just that as they're up 14 to nothing. This is our biggest deficit of the season so far. But Malachi Kidd would get into the end zone for the touchdown 
with under a minute to go in the half. And now number three looks down the field. He has plenty of time. Throws left side. It's going to be caught by 23. But he coughs up the football. And now 55 picks it up for us. So now with six seconds to go, we have one last chance to get into the end zone. Dobney just lets this one fly. And in triple coverage, Tyree Gordon comes up with it for the touchdown. And we're tied at 14 at the half. In the second half now, here's Dobney looking down the field. Throws over the middle. He's going to be picked off. Looking for number four. But number 39 is right there. Nevada wouldn't cause any damage, however. But now Tedesco Harmon would try a field goal. But he'd absolutely shank the heck out of it. So now we're into the fourth quarter. Still a tie ball game of 14. And here's number three. Letting it fly deep. 45 trying to get there. But 84 makes an easy touchdown grab. And now we're playing from behind with three minutes to go. Ryan Relish, however, would punch it in off a counter to tie it up at 21. So now Nevada looking to make something happen on the third down. Here's a throw right side, tipped away by number 55. So now we have a minute to get down the field and possibly score. Caught by number 21, who gets inside the 30. And now second and 13 under a minute to go. Dobney looks down the field and checks down to the fullback. He breaks the tackle. And number 44 is going to get out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. Now with 17 seconds to go, we could kick a field goal, but Tedesco's been so unreliable in this game that we might as well just let Relish run it in for the touchdown. Last chance for Nevada as they look to throw a Hail Mary here. But number three is hit as he throws, and it falls harmlessly to the ground as we get a 28-21 victory over our in-state rivals. Next up, we take on BYU, who's 1-3 on the season. Now look, I know Bengal has said many times that he's the best punter on YouTube, but look, I have something to say about that, as this is an absolutely beautiful coffin corner punt, and very next play, they decide to run a pitch for some reason, and they end up giving up a safety. So now on fourth and goal on our very next drive, Ryan Relish is able to punch it in for the touchdown to give us a 9-0 lead. BYU looks to respond here, but number 55 comes up with a pick. He has been such a beast so far this season. Now we open up the second quarter with Dobney looking down the field, and he has time. Throws over the middle, and it's going to be caught by number 17 for the touchdown. And we're up 15 to nothing after a failed two-point conversion. But now number six is going to punch it in for the touchdown as BYU finally gets on the board. And now here's the throw right side. Tipped into the air, and it's going to be picked off by number 52, who gets inside the BYU 30. A few plays later, first and goal, handoff to Relish, and he gets the second touchdown of the game. So now it's 22-7, to seven, midway through the second quarter. Now their quarterback tries to scramble it. He coughs up the football, 97 picks it up. And after we fail to really get any movement, Harmon Tedesco kicks a 35-yard field goal to make it 25-7. to seven. Two minutes left in the second quarter, and here's number six getting to the outside, and he's going to get into the end zone for BYU as it's 25-14 to 14 at the half. Halfway through the third quarter now, they kick a 35-yard field goal, and it goes just outside the upright. So it's still a two-score game. Now they try a 46-yarder, and this one's wide left, and it wouldn't have made it even if it had the accuracy. So now we're still up by 11 as Dobney goes right side, finds 21 in the end zone for his second touchdown pass of the game. 31-14 after a failed two-point conversion, and now another interception by number 55. He has been so clutch. That's the second interception of the game. But on the very next play, Dobney would throw the ball away as they recover the fumble. But now third and goal. Here's their quarterback throwing over the middle, and 55 gets his third pick of the game. He has had an absolute show of a game. And then we just decide to run up the score. No sportsmanship for the CPU whatsoever as Dobney decides to scramble it and gets into the end zone for the touchdown as we win 38-14, improving to 6-0 on the season. So now we take on 1-5 New Mexico, who's one of the worst teams in college football right now. Second and three, Dobney rolls to his right, pitches it back out to Kidd, jukes out the defender, but he coughs it up while he was doing so, and New Mexico gets the ball. Now first and goal, number 22 on the direct snap, punches it in for the touchdown, and just like that, we're down 7-0 to one of the worst teams in college football. Harmon Tedesco would get us on the field, however, with a field goal. Now we're into the second quarter. Malachi Kidd punches it in for the touchdown to give us a 10-7 lead. So now, halfway through the third quarter, Dobney on the play fake, throws right side, and it's caught by Tyree Gorn Jr. in the end zone for the touchdown, and it's 17-7. New Mexico would get on the board with a field goal to make it 17-10. to 
But now 15 seconds left in the second quarter. Dobney throws right side to Kidd, who gets his second touchdown of the game. Second pass by Dobney, and it's 24-10 at the half. So now into the second half, we're looking to get some more points on the board as Ryan Relish punches it in for the touchdown to make it 30-10 to after a failed extra point. Now Dobney, looking down the field, looks to scramble, throws last second to 86, who comes up with it for the touchdown. And this is starting to turn into a blowout after a very slow start by us. Number 12 throws right side, and he's picked off by number 55, the defensive MVP for this team. And this game is just getting uglier and uglier by the second as Dobney rolls to his right once again. And he throws last second, caught in double coverage by 21 for the touchdown. Four touchdown passes in the game for Dobney. And just to add insult to injury, Chad Powers, the backup quarterback, scores 50-10 to is the final. We have yet another suspension here as our starting center, number 76, will be out for two quarters because of some infractions. But on the good side, we're actually ranked now at number 25 as we take on Utah. And yes, this is a Utah team that Alex Smith played for right before he got drafted by the Niners, but Tyree Gorin doesn't care about all that as he makes a touchdown grab. Utah would try a 46-yard field goal, and it would be just short. It was on target, just not enough power there. But then number 44 for us fumbles the football, and Utah picks it up. So now he'll try a 31-yarder, and this one almost shanks, but he just barely gets it inside the upright. So now under a minute to go in the first half, Dobney on the play fake. Looks left side, and it goes right into the hands of number 40 for the INT. So that's a rough way to end a half for us. Now 35 seconds to go. Here's Alex Smith on the scramble. He's going to cough it up, however, and Hemony Cricket picks it up. So we're actually able to get some points last second as Tyree Gorin gets into the end zone for the touchdown. And that's his second of the day as we go up 14-3 at the half. But Utah would drive down the field, hand off to the fullback. He'd get into the end zone for the touchdown to make it 14-10. And now Alex Smith drops back, looks left side, finds the tight end who gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Utah takes a 17-14 lead. But Ryan Relish would bounce back and get into the end zone for the touchdown to make it 21-17. And then the fullback... Coughs it up on the ensuing drive. Picked up by Cordell Willis. He'd juke a couple of defenders. Get into the end zone for the touchdown. But Utah wouldn't go down without a fight. Alex Smith goes right side. Throws to the end zone. Caught in the end zone for the touchdown. As it's 28-23 to after a failed two-point conversion. They'd have to get the onside kick. They nearly do, but Malachi Kidd's able to pick it up. And we walk away with a 28-23 to victory over Utah. Another week, another suspension as we take on Wyoming in this one. And our suspension this time around is Olafemi Dobney, who will be out for a game after missing a team meeting. So that means backup quarterback Chad Powers will be the starter for this one, as we're now ranked number 18, taking on 5-3 and three Wyoming. Number 17 drops back, and he throws across his body, finds number 9 for the touchdown. Harmon Tedesco would come out for a field goal to get us on the board, and that would go in to make it 7-3. to three. So late in the first quarter, here's Powers, pump fakes, looking down the field. He's hit as he throws, but number 21 comes back for it and catches it for the touchdown to make it 10-7. to Wyoming trying to get something going here as number 17 has time, throws over the middle, but he's going to be picked off by number 55, who has been the defensive MVP, as I've mentioned before. And our last few seconds of the first quarter, Ryan Relish punches it in for the touchdown to make it 17-7. to Early on in the second quarter, here's the play fake. Thrown right side, and I don't even know what happened to CT there. He just got faked out, and he gets burned for a big touchdown. So 17-14 to 14 now. Chad Powers throws to the back of the end zone. Caught by 21 for the touchdown. So Chad Powers is looking pretty good in relief of Olafemi Dobney. As we're up 24-14, last few seconds of the second quarter, he throws right side, caught by 17 this time for the touchdown. So three first-half touchdown passes for Powers as we're up 31-14 at the half. Wyoming looks to respond, however. 17, throws right side, and he's going to be intercepted by 55. He's going to take this one back for the touchdown. That's his second pick of the day, and I believe his first touchdown of the season. But as we're driving on our very next drive, Ryan Rolls coughs it up. Wouldn't matter, as he'd make up for it and get into the end zone for the touchdown, as we win 45-14 to over Wyoming. Next up, we take on 2-7 Colorado State, who is really struggling so far this season. They're already ineligible for bowl season, but they're looking to play spoiler here, but their kicker's going to miss a 36-yard field goal wide right. 
Olafemi Dobney is back this week after serving a one-game suspension, and he looks down the field, throws over the middle, and it's going to be intercepted by number 59. That was just a great play. And now their kicker tries another kick, this time from 26 yards out, and he gets it to go. So Colorado State's up 3-0 as they get the ball back. Number 8 looks over the middle, and he's going to be intercepted by McCray. Huge play there by Kendrick McCray. Last play of the first quarter, Dobney on the play fake. Looks down the field, lets this one fly to a wide open receiver. Caught by number four. He's going to go all the way to the house for the touchdown. So we're up 7-3, to three, and now Harmon Tedesco tries a 29-yard field goal. That just barely goes inside the upright to make it 10-3. to three. Now, under three minutes to go in the first half, Tedesco tries another field goal. This one goes right down the middle, so we're up 13-3. to three. Last minute of the second quarter, we get into the end zone as Ryan Relish punches that one in. Now, 13 seconds to go. CSU looks to get on the board. Thrown over the middle to number 32 who gets into the end zone for the touchdown. And it's 20 to 10 heading into the second half. So now here's number 8. Throws over the middle and number 55 comes up with yet another interception. And now we drive down the field. Olafemi Dobney throws off his back foot and is somehow caught by 4 for the touchdown. That was a very dangerous throw, however. So now we're up 27 to 10. They're going to try a field goal to make it a two-score game. So now it's 27 to 13. Dobney looks to put this game away, however, as he looks down the field, but he throws it into double coverage and he's picked off by number 16. So Colorado State has some life now as they look to make it a one-score game with plenty of time to go. But now fourth down, number eight, looks down the field, holds it way too long, throws across his body, and it's incomplete. So now we have a chance to put this game away. Dobney on third and four, looks down the field, throws right side, and it's gonna be intercepted. I don't know how 17 didn't come up with that one, but now Colorado State has life once again. Now third down, thrown over the middle, is picked off on number 32. But we'd end up going three and out, now Colorado State has one last chance to get some points on the board, but now 55 comes up with another huge pick. And this man has just been an absolute stud all season. Colorado State would get one last chance. They'd actually get a big run here by number 20 who punches it in for the touchdown. But they need to get this onside kick to stay alive. And their kicker just absolutely booted this one out of bounds. And we'd survive 27-20 against CSU. We are 10-0 on the season playing our final regular season game as we take on San Diego State. And we're currently ranked 14th in the nation and are the only undefeated team in college football right now. And number 55 comes up with a huge pick early on in this game. And now Powers is into the game over Daubney as he hands it off to Relish who gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Now here's number 5 looking over the middle. And he scrambles, throws off his back foot, and it's going to be caught by 81, the tight end, for the touchdown. And we're tied at 7. Late in the first quarter now, number 5 looks over the middle, and he's going to be picked off by 55 again. 55's had a huge season. He's very close to setting a single-season record for picks in a season as Tedesco kicks a field goal to make it 10-7. to Now, five minutes to go in the second quarter, number 5 drops over the middle, and 55 gets his third pick of the game, and I believe this is the pick that got him the single-season record. Yep, 15 interceptions in a season. That is an NCAA record. So now second and goal, handoff to Relish. He gets into the end zone for the touchdown to make it 17-7. Now, final few moments of the second quarter. Relish is going to get into the end zone once again as we take a 24-7 lead into halftime. We're into the third quarter now, and here's the throw of the middle. This time it's going to be tipped up and picked off once again by 55. He has four picks in this game. He is going off right now as Tedesco kicks a field goal, and this one just barely goes inside the upright to make it 27-7. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. They're going to try a field goal. That's not even close, however. And now here's Powers on the play fake, looking down the field. And he has plenty of time. Throws off his back foot, however. And that's like quadruple coverage. That might be quintuple coverage, honestly, as 39 comes up with a pick. So now 36 seconds to go in the third quarter now. Here's a throw of the middle caught, but it's going to be fumbled, and now him and he Cricket picks it up, but then he coughs it up. San Diego State gets the ball back. Now into the fourth quarter, fourth down, and number 22 is going to be tackled short of the end zone. So now all we have to do is just run the clock out, but, you know, no sportsmanship. Powers throws right side. It goes off the back of... Of the defender into 86's hands for the touchdown. That's a crazy way to end this one as we went 34-7. We did have a few award winners to end year one as number 56 wins Offensive Lineman of the Year. 55 wins the Bednarik Award. 
And we're going to the Liberty Bowl to take on number eight, Louisville. Both of us missed out on BCS Bowls that we probably should have got to. But it's the Conference USA champion taking on the Mountain West champion as Tedesco looks to kick a field goal here. And that barely goes inside the upright for a 3-0 lead. So now here's Louisville. Number 17 steps up, lets this one fly. One-on-one -on -one and CT just gets beat by number two for the touchdown. That's a rough play. We end up having to punt it on the very next drive. Here's number 20 on the return, but Brad Follow with a big hit. He's going to call for the football, and CT makes up for giving up the touchdown before by recovering that fumble as Dobney sneaks it in for a touchdown to give us a 10-7 lead. They're going to kick a field goal that's tied up at 10, so this is a real nail-biter so far. Tedesco tries another field goal. This one's going to be just short, however. So now we're into the third quarter. It was tied 10 apiece at halftime. Dobney throws left side. It's tipped, and it's going to be picked off by 21. So... We're struggling. Dobney ends up getting benched, so now Chad Powers is back into the game. He's going to look into the end zone. Throws last second, and it's caught by 86 for the touchdown to give us a 17-10 lead. Louisville's looking to score here, but 23 is going to cough it up. We almost recovered it, but it goes out of bounds in the back of the end zone for a touchback. And that would lead to us winning 17-10 over Louisville as we win the Liberty Bowl and finish the season 12-0. As far as the national championship goes, LSU ended up beating USC 35-31 to in a very close game. I'm going to include the offseason in the year two recap, but if you do want to watch the offseason, I do have it live as a VOD on my YouTube channel, so go check that out if you'd like. And make sure you guys sub to me on YouTube so you guys can follow along with the series as I stream it. And I have plenty more content coming very soon, so just keep your eyes up for it, folks.